Hello and welcome to 365 Days Towards Racial Change. My name is Thomas Nyback. Let's get right into it. I think I have a lot of talking points today. We're here talking about black issues. Again, if you stuck around, you know, you know. I, although I think it's good to review daily just so we're on the same page, the same space. My burden is for uh, black people to kind of get it together in a sense, and I want to uh, maybe have an educational forum, understand aspects of black oppression power that, I mean, you know, how whites manipulate and, and exercise control uh, and, and the whole married of needs. That's kind of the forum that we uh, have going here. Um, and having said that, um, two thoughts emerge as I go through this project, you know, and I say that to be on the same page. You want to probably, hopefully, you'll, you've heard this now. This is the 118th time you've heard it, but but it's important. Um, just going back a minute, just so we know the rules, know why we're here, and all that. This is not a hate channel. We understand there's other aggrieved groups in America and all of the above. But we're just having an educational piece um, articulate uh, more precisely the black Americans' argument, uh, the angst they, we may have uh, against a white controlled uh, democracy and power structure here in America. Having said that, two thoughts emerge as I uh, continue this project. I'm sure uh, there's others, but two major ones is, is the black mind, the slave mind, the ignorant mind, ignorant meaning not stupid or dumb, but just ignorant, unaware of the privileges, rights, powers, how to address, how to, how to broach those areas uh, in in this white country. You know, I talk to my white friends. I have one, many white friends of all kinds of um, all kinds of diversity in there. <laughs> but it's amazing. Like now, I'm starting to ask questions about finances and about their lives and stuff. And it's so it's it's uh, bringing off. You know, I'm unveiling some of the magic they're willing to share, <laughs> you know, and uh, so it's impressive how they they can argue, articulate some of the privileges and stuff they have, um, things that are challenging for blacks to get, uh, but but they can articulate. They've been taught around the dinner table and in their youths about this, so these things are so natural. Uh, that they don't even talk about it. It'd be like if you if you're able to walk. Hopefully you are, uh, but I'm able to walk. It'd be like uh, me um, talking about this privilege of walking uh, to maybe a handicapped person or a paralyzed person. You just we don't think about it. We don't talk about it because it's so ingrained in my life. Um, even as a privilege, uh, that I don't talk about these things. Well, it's the same with white folks, with uh, their understanding of money and some of the intricacies of, of even moving money to work for them and other aspects of American life. You know, they, they don't talk about it, my guess is, because it's just so normal and part of their lives. So the ignorance I speak of for black folks is more of being unaware, you know, uh, there's a time, you know, the earth, you know, populations on the earth believed the earth was flat, right? Cause, cause they were ignorant of mass and, and circumference that they were sticking on, to, on a ball through gravity, gravity. And as we look further and further out to space, our ignorance kind of diminishes to, to a degree because we're, we have access, our senses have access to more information out there. That's, you can use that illustration 
various illustrations for that same thing. I'm just an amateur astronomer, so uh, you'll, always, you'll hear me use a lot of space analogies. Anyway, so the ignorance of the black man. Now, flip side of the same coin, we're still on the first thought. The first thought is the, the geist, the idea, the ideologies, the mindset of people. Now, the second, the other side of that same coin is, does the white mind of privilege, we just talked about that, prevail from generation to generation, or are they just naturally passing these things on to one another? You know, um, it, it, it establishes a rutter, uh, a means of stability overall in their community, I believe. And so we need to uh, take that into account and, and do some dissecting on the black mind and on the white mind. Okay. Now, the second thought is my burden for financial literacy among black folks. It's very, it's critical. I'm finding as I delve more and more into some of the specific terms, topics, assets, liabilities, Disposable income, uh, balance sheet, cash flow statement, income statement, um, accounting terms, all these things uh, are giving me access to uh, uh, maybe not monetary change right now in the present, but it's giving me some, it's giving me more access and becoming a driver in. Uh, changing my mentality about that crisp American note, that federal note. I shouldn't even call it an American note. It's, a, it's actually an international note. Um, uh, hopefully later in the year, I'm, I'm going to be able to articulate better. But uh, if you look on your bill, all the bills of any denomination, it says it's a federal note. It's kind of an I O. You know, so we, we need to get better with understanding that. That's going to help propel all of us. I say that is critical because uh, white folks know it by heart. They can just roll that stuff off their tongue. And I just I just sit back and I'm astounded. It never happened in my family. My family was spend, go to work and spend. You know, ah, so wrong. All right. Uh, now, I'm, uh, I'm inspired by a man named Dr. Claude Anderson. You can find him here all over YouTube, and he's got a lot of other resources. But I read three of his books. We've referenced these a lot. First book I read was A Black History Reader, 101 Questions You Never Thought to Ask. I want you to get these books. Any text that I hold up is something uh, that I'm reading, and, uh, and I want you to uh, get it. So we can be on the same page. Sorry to for pardon the pun. Um, don't just listen to me expound, but you know, do your own research. Black labor, white wealth, search for power and economic justice, and Dr. Anderson's plan to empower Black America. Poweronomics. You can find Dr. Anderson at poweronomics.com and the Heritage Institute in Washington, D.C. We also take a fictional look at Slave Life in America, Harriet Beecher Stowe's phenomenal work. I usually have it here, but when I do laundry, I tend to forget to bring the book back, but you'll see it. Easy book to find. Google probably has it online for free, although I encourage you to use a physical book. Uncle Tom's Cabin by Harriet Beecher Stowe, uh, mid-1800s, are written. I am, I'm in the last part. I'm finishing up the book. And uh, Harriet, uh, she's given her own conclusions, and uh, I couldn't get, I was really tearing up. It's an incredible finish and some, some interesting things. But uh, will we talk about this book? And it's, uh, and just as kind of having our story time, but um, now that I'm at the end of the book, I'm, I'm more affirmed in its importance to racial change here and why uh, we, we may need to reintroduce this uh, book into America in some way uh, to get get some things rolling. You need to know that 
This book by Harry Beecher Stowe was the second best seller after the Bible. The Bible's always been the best seller. You know, it's the champion of written works throughout the throughout the world, right? That her so that should give you an idea of her book influencing the American minds, slave and free, in America, mid eighteen hundreds, right before the Civil War. Behind me, you'll see hashtag us too, the black women discoursing, getting support for one another there. There's some specific issues between male and female, and there's all you'll find other groups there as well. Black Enough, B-L-A-G-G-E-N-U-F is another space. You can go to kind of a black Facebook. Uh, and if you found me here at, on, on YouTube, uh, please leave comments and likes and all that stuff. But uh, uh, you are technologically, informationally literate. You can find your flavor. It's the internet. Okay, I'm going to reference another book only on today because uh, our two were continuing, almost finished our uh, series on uh, signers of the Declaration of Independence, and we were finding little important jewels and gems. Uh, Tune in tomorrow. There's an incredible uh, 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 development in our interviews uh, with these men that signed the Declaration of Independence. These two men are from Scotland today, though. James Wilson and John Witherspoon. And I want to show you a text that I'm reading. I just started reading. Uh, this is uh, Adam Smith. Uh, Wealth of Nations. A lot of it's a lot of people use it, textbook and stuff, and economics and whatnot. I think this is another important book. We're not going to reference that because it's specifics about economics and all that. We're, this is an economics focused uh, forum here, but I hold it up because uh, we, we've got a lot of guys. Uh, we got a guy from Wales. I think there's a guy or two from England. A lot of Irish representation. Today, both men are from Scotland. Um, you know, whether they came in their infancy or whether they came um, kind of um, mid-20s, uh, they're coming from places where economics is... is is that issue? It's all. It's it's always an issue, of course, all over the world. But but we we get a sense where the colonies are learning from a lot of mistakes. Okay, monarchy from England, total bust. We don't want anything to do with that. We find that the Irish and Scottish influence, Wales influence to. Uh, okay, the people from there are, are bringing their new thought. And so they're taking some opportunity to make some adjustments. Okay, my homeland was like this. Um, let's maybe challenge some of those ideas and whatnot. You know, and Adam Smith he, he mentions the Americas. This is back, you know, early 1700s and whatnot, mid 1700s. So he mentions he's. Already, I'm only at the beginning of the book, but he mentions the colonies. Uh, a few times, but, but I say this because both guys here in their thought, uh, they're educators, uh, very active and wealthy and stuff like that, but they also influence the mind of future leaders of America. So, you know, so what I'm getting is, in a sense, as we finish up uh, this very important series is that these men are... Um, you know, they, they're seeing so much opportunity. I, I did a piece uh, months ago, I think, called The Opportunity or The um, a Comedy of Opportunity or something like that was the title. But in it, I talk about um, the, the people of the Declaration even and, and just the, the, the men population here in the colony just seeing they, their opportunities separated geographically. Um, they knew the terrain, you know, England had to have boats come over, you know, they didn't necessarily come in a huge armada 
You know, they, they had no idea what was going on. It was a different kind of fight and all that. And uh, being separated from England encouraged the, uh, the colonists to, to, be, to think more freely and be opposed to what was going on. So uh, some of these men from uh, Scotland, Ireland, Wales, even England, uh, had to see the same thing, and there were some of these guys were educators, and they're sitting there and uh, talking to the young minds and challenging things, uh, forwarding arguments. You know, Thomas Jefferson sat under some of the some of these guys. You know, very close to this circle. So, so I say that because you know, yeah, Adam Smith is a philosopher, economist. Um, he writes the Wealth of Nations. And, and kind of talks about it, but uh, or I want to um, yeah, just amplify and make known that America is where, you know, it's a new space and it's where the, the new regime, if you will, is going to create some new spaces and new policies to um, uh, to address some things that may have been wrong about the former regimes or the places from which they come. Okay, James Wilson, day 118. Born 1742, died 1798. He represented Pennsylvania. He was a lawyer um, of uh, high degree legal theorist. Um, uh, he shaped uh, legal proceedings, uh, jurisprudence. He, he was a guy to not just uh, be called on to defend or prosecute people. He, he was a, a, uh, an innovator, a man that shaped legal policy, precedence in the courtroom. That, that's his... Um, you know, some of his claim to fame. He wasn't just some popular, wealthy lawyer. He was a guy that people, he'd give counsel to judges and courts and things like that. Very important. Remember, uh, the capital of our nation was Philadelphia. He represents Pennsylvania. And, and from the capital, we get an idea uh, of the direction in which the nation's going or should go, a lot of influence from there. So he's very close to, to that space physically. So, you know, and he's, you know, hanging out. I'm, you know, sure if he, you know, says the slightest thing about law, it probably becomes, you know, institutional imperative across the colonies. That's the power this man had an extensive military career, Brigadier General of the Pennsylvania State Militia. Remember, uh, at the, if my historical accounts are right, French and Indian War is going on. Different militias are created to, to be that buffer against uh, American interest at the time. Uh, religious, religiously grew up Presbyterian ended up in my research listed as Episcopalian slash deist. Uh, I, I, you know, I'm guessing he, he just had a relationship with God and he was just comfortable with ever. Not, not a big you know, Bible thumping and caring about uh, aspects of the congregations. He, he was just, you know, hanging out there a little apathetic towards slavery. Now, we're coming out of Wikipedia here, and, and it talks military, 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 law, law, and stuff like that, educator. And some of these guys, you know, some did chime in, abolitionists, or they were plantation owners and owned slaves. Uh, but, you know, other guys were just um, abstained. From the whole thing, you know, they're creating papers, running militaries, stuff, you know. Unfortunately, you know, black slaves were not the priority to 
uh, the founders, early fathers of this nation. Some of these, some of these guys were uh, busy with business, um, making laws, thinking about uh, the future of the nation, challenging their own beliefs and the beliefs of others. We got to accept that. Thinking in your own house, you have your own concerns. Like I think about my own house. If I had the power, I wouldn't have caravans of Central Americans coming in through Mexico, very violent. But there's just something I don't know if it's. I wrote it in here. Uh, I read the description, but it, Mexico's violence is out of control. Out of control. You know, if I had the power and influence, I would wave a wand and uh, bring out my idea of equity and justice in the world. But, uh, you know, i got to hold it down here. I just saw a huge <laughs> increase in my student loan repayment, and I just laughed at it. And, you know, they'll, they'll, what can you do? But I got my own issues. You know, these men had their own issues, and I had so... So anyway, there's, I'm, I'm softening and being very quick to uh, you know, abuse the founders and stuff, and, you know, and not having slavery as a priority in their lives. I've lived on the planet long enough to know that there are priorities. And uh, the slaves just were not at the top of their of their agenda. You know, now part of what got me going in this whole year long project is hearing Dr. Anderson say that uh, some of the founders went into more exclusive back rooms and deliberately crafted language to exclude slaves in the uh, in access to wealth and resources in America. I, I, I'm still believing that, especially after what we know about Maryland in 1638, disenfranchising black folks um, in 1663, uh, making uh, all black folks slaves. So, so I'm not surprised about that. So, you know, maybe someday I'll run into some specific uh, commentary to support his uh, view. Uh, hey, stick, hang around a barbershop long enough, you're going to get a haircut, right? <laughs> okay. Uh, and he signed uh, just an individual to shape he helped shape a new nation. Now, um, John Witherspoon is our next guy up. Born 1723, died 1794. He represented New Jersey. Now, this is a, a, one of our, I think we did have a another minister or pastor among us. This guy is definitely a reverend um, with the Presbyterian Church here out of Scotland. Uh, he was imprisoned. He came to Scotland in, a, in his 20s, I guess. He was in prison. Scotland had its wars and stuff going on. John Witherspoon, I guess, was on the, uh, the side that um, uh, may have been defeated or whatever. Anyway, he was imprisoned, and prison ruined his health. Very, If you follow this series, that's a very common denominator. You go to prison... You know, back then, you didn't get weights, cable television, health care. <laughs> you know, pri and now prisons, it's, uh, you know, pretty bad place. You general population, fights, danger, violence, stuff like that. Uh, but, uh, n you know, not so prison, jail. It's very, very accommodating, but not so. But we, we have we have wives in the, in this series. We have a wife that was ruined, had her health ruined. 
handful of guys, now John Witherspoon, his health is ruined as a result of prison. You, you avoided prison being detained because, uh, you know, you, you were treated any kind of way. You didn't have committees, councils, uh, prisoners' rights and stuff like that. Uh, you're at the mercy uh, of your guards. Um, he was an educator. Uh, another guy that you know oversaw some of the emerging mind, emerging minds and leaders of America. Um, so he's our Presbyterian minister proper, and nothing much about um, his view on slavery. But it's interesting in the research Wikipedia that Scotland embraced slavery, but not for long. Now listen, further north you go, you don't have this slavery on steroids like America practiced. Scotland slavery was uh, captured uh, military personnel, indentured servants. It was a humane slavery compared to um, what was going on in America. And Scotland quickly cast off uh, any type of slavery models proper, you know, officially. They didn't um, embrace that for long. I, I just, I think it's an important point, you know, again, we're talking about Scotland, the Scottish. So, you know, where they come from, you pay for your labor. You, there's some humanity. Uh, they're humane. Uh, I, it's probably a religion is probably factors in very heavily, you know, about treating your brothers and sisters, you know. You know, seeing black folks may have been a shock. Um, but I, I'm guessing, like, this is a guess, them being up north in the cold and covered up, they say, well, okay, there's a black person. They're from the South. They don't wear much clothes and stuff like that. I don't think you have to do a whole much, a lot of science to understand the differences in color of skin back then. You know? But I, I'm guessing the Scots saw the darker humans as humans. They weren't uh, aliens. They weren't from another planet or some a regression in the human gene. <laughs> you know, as we've seen some of these guys, some of the things we come across in this series. Um, uh, he signed uh, obvious Britain's intentions uh, were obvious and he recognized uh, the opportunity uh, to not, eat, not just maybe correct some of Scotland's flaws in, uh, in communities and the laws and stuff like that. But, you know, this is a new nation. This is an opportunity. So let, let's get some, put some things in order, some things we can get right. Some of these guys, I imagine, are a lot like me. You know, you got to, if you don't get it at the source, you're going to be, you're going to, uh, face uh, some challenges later down the road, you know. So that's kind of what I get uh, from these two guys. Okay, we wrapped it up. We got one more day to go. Stick around and then think we're going to do a day, a day, day of some wrap-up and some conclusions. Thanks for hanging in there with me. I'm not uh, Tomlin's Nyback. And that's 365 days towards racial change. We'll see you soon.